Moldova is a beautiful river. It's a vital artery that has been supplying Prague with its most precious resource since time immemorial. At first, wells were enough for people's needs. Later, water began to be carried to the monasteries and both Prague castles from springs on the hillsides through open troughs and pipes. These would have been wooden and occasionally even lead or ceramic. It was not until much later, during the Renaissance, that waterworks began to be built alongside the Voltava, with a pipe system distributing water to fountains and troughs around the city. And over there is Poddly Waterworks, which we'll be taking a closer look at. The complex of buildings at the Municipal Waterworks in Podoli, to give it its original name, stands on the right bank of the Voltava between Podoli Embankment and Podolska Street. It was built between 1924 and 1929 after a design by the architect Antonin Engel. Hidden within this gem of neoclassical architecture is its raison d'etre, water treatment technology. The basic principle has remained unchanged since the plant was first put into service. The water goes through screening and coagulation before being purified, filtered and then disinfected. Though of course it's not as simple as it sounds. And while the principle is the same, the technology itself, resulting in perfectly clean drinking water, has changed a great deal. Let's have a look at the ground floor. In the 1800s, the rapidly expanding city's need for water far exceeded the capacity of the water supply system. Around the middle of the century, the four originally Renaissance waterworks, each with their own distribution system, were joined by one more plant, but even so, the expansion of the water supply network couldn't keep up with demand. In the early 20th century, the construction of the Karini waterworks improved the situation, but the development of Greater Prague required vast amounts of water. Podoli Waterworks was intended to, and did, solve the water supply problem. Since 1929, water has been drawn from the Voltava. It flows through debris screens in the intake station and travels through pipes under the riverbed to the fine screens here at the treatment plant. Pumps then transport the water up to the receivers. Here, the inflow needs to be stabilized and settled before it can advance to the next stage of treatment. You're probably wondering why this pump house is empty. Here, we can see the first of the technological advances we mentioned. Well, we can't, actually. There used to be giant pumps here, forcing water into the tanks above us, so that gravity could then take care of the whole flow of the treatment process. Those pumps are now so much smaller that they're concealed down beneath us, right by the pipes. Let's go up. This is the freight lift, but you're not allowed to ride in it. Your virtual self can, though. I'll take the stairs and see you up there. We're in the clarifier hall. The water from the receivers is fed into here at a regulated flow rate to ensure that the clarifiers work properly. Before the water enters them, ferrous sulfate is added to it. This is used to clump pollutant particles together in a process called coagulation. Clarification removes the particles that have formed by passing the water through the sludge blanket that is floating here in the circular tank. There are also toothed edge drainage channels that the water we are treating is poured over. It's looking pretty clean now, don't you think? Do you understand the role played by Clarifier now? We have four clarifiers that were completely refurbished a few years ago, which is another sign of the upgrading here. And now, we're going down with the water. What's this? You'd think this magnificent tank-filled hall belonged in another building. As we mentioned earlier, the outside of the buildings is neoclassical, and here we are standing under a modern, functionalist, reinforced concrete structure, which was wonderfully renovated 20 years ago. The parabolic arches have a span of 29 meters and are 16 meters high. 
This was the largest reinforced concrete structure in Czechoslovakia at the time it was built. But it's the water we're interested in. From that cluster of cleaning clarifiers. That was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? A cluster of cleaning clarifiers. As tricky as water treatment itself. So, the water makes its way down here to the sand filters, but before that, hydrated lime and chlorine are injected into the pipes. This adjusts the chemical parameters to improve the flocculation of the last of the solute that we want to remove by filtration. The first stage is separation via rapid sand filters, and then filters with granular activated carbon. And here we are in the control room, where the whole process is controlled from. So let's go over it again. Water from the Voltiver. Screens. Pumps. Clarifiers. Yes, that cluster of cleaning clarifiers. Filtering. Sand filtering. Filtering via granular activated carbon. That stunning hall. A temple to water. And once the water has slowly made its way through the sand and carbon, all that's left is to make sure that it is hygienically safe for human consumption. That's a job for UV and chlorine. And there is the water ready to drink. If you're wondering how long it takes for water from the Voltiver to become drinkable, it's about eight hours at the treatment plant's current capacity of around 400 liters per second. In the space of eight hours, raw water is treated in the Podoli complex and discharged into a water tank underneath us. It is hidden under the courtyard, and the water is pumped out of it in four directions, to the Karloff, Flora, and Zelenar Lishka tanks, plus through a pipe under the Voltava River to the Smichov side, where it ends up in reservoirs such as Laurava and Bruska. As I touched on a couple of times, and as you've seen, there have been lots of modifications and upgrades to the waterworks over the nearly 100 years it's been in operation. One of the most extensive took place just before the devastating flood of 2002. Between 2002 and 2021, the waterworks was maintained as a backup plant and further technical improvements were made. Today, it can produce 400 liters of drinking water per second. And that was precisely the capacity of the original municipal waterworks when it opened in 1929.